every style, every uh, every aspect. I mean, there's definitely been influences within the instrument, and, uh, but uh, I, I look at, like at, at music more of a compositional. Like for me, when we did the first different production, but started off songs for songs, it's almost like, be like just normal rock. So this music conception music was never really which is more of a fusion CD. Like, so we kind of had both names at the same time. Really? Some of these bands are like the mixture of them. Jazz, jazz, jazz. Necessarily, someone playing the same instrument. Really, it's just music in general. Um, take pieces from from every style, every uh, every aspect. I mean, there's definitely been influences within the instrument, but uh, I, I look at, at at music more of a compositional uh, feel for me more than than standing out in front, at least as a guitarist or. or but do you remember like like when so you first started playing guitar, though? I mean, who were some people that Kiss. Really? <laughs> Kiss was, was for me. Kiss was it. Kiss was uh It was Rush for me. I mean, like, Geddy Lee is really the reason I started playing bass. You know? Really? It just, ever, all my friends, they were playing air guitar and air drums, so <laughs> I, I became the air, air bass, bass player. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't focus on that. But, uh, but uh, you know, then if you hear Jocko, you know, for every bass player that you know, turns your world around. And Gary Willis, of course, is a bass player. Like, I don't listen to bass players much anymore. I mean, to me, it's like you were saying, it's. Same here, right? You know, to me, to listen to Bill Evans play piano and, right. and how he did things, I mean, there's well, so much of an influence there of just, you know, how to handle harmony and performance and things like that, that once you kind of get familiar with your instrument, I think you get less yeah. inspired by an actual... Well, I think it's that also, and just your the, your emotional state and, and, and your, your influence as far as who you are as a person has a great deal to do with even what you listen to at this point, you know, I think when, certainly when you're younger or you're starting to learn your instrument, you kind of Where immerse you yourself into learning the technical aspect. Aspects. Yeah. But there also is a certain maturity of just where you are as a person that steers you in different musical directions. Right. Well, you and have allows to, you to you take from different things. You have to get an understanding before you can really find a, a direction that you want to go mm -hmm. to begin with. Because there are a lot of players, I mean, as, as good as they are, they seem so scattered with so many different either influences or styles, and they never really found their own voice to you know, express themselves in. You know, it's like, they can imitate everything that right. they've heard. Yeah, it's very easy to get caught up in a certain train of, of, of getting influences or something, like, you know, get the technical thing that's always about the technical thing, and you miss out on so many different simple things that aren't necessarily technical. Because people think the technical aspect of playing is the hard part. That's the easy part, because you sit in your room and you keep playing it till you get it. It's knowing when not to play. Right. And, um, and compositionally, when to... You know, so with so many songs you hear, especially in the you know progressive rock or metal world these days, it's it's so much about what you can play versus what you can write, and um, that's that's the easy part, I think. You know, trying to play something real fast, but having something that someone's going to remember. You know, have some longevity of the composition, some kind of feeling. To and it. usually, that's something true. memorable and something um, that really sticks <coughs> is relatively simple. Right. And it takes a level of maturity in music before you can really attain that concept right. of simplicity, which is, is something I'm still right. you know, well, trying see, to Well, see, that's even a battle down. between, like, like you know, I said, emotional. It's, it's a like never ending an ego right. thing. Like, I got to sure. get all of this stuff in instead of saying, okay, let me right. listen to this and listen to what it really calls for. Exactly. You know what I mean? Or even have the ability to step outside and get past, okay, um, I'm playing my bass drum here and my snare drum here and, and right. listening to it for music, you know what I mean? I mean, I definitely find myself less interested in trying to write things that are just so hard to play versus something that comes to mind that I like. Exactly. You know, there's Sounds times, good. You, you fill yeah. in those places from time to time with something that's kind of exciting and sure. dynamic and, you know, but past that, I really don't have the stamina anymore Well, and also to really knowing when not, to, yeah. <clears throat> when not to put something there and sacrificing yourself and for example your instrument for the betterment of the whole song right? for me it's been and there's been a kind of a drastic change in the stuff i've been listening to i've been listening to i mean when i first moved out to la about a year and a half ago i was listening to a lot more straight ahead and like coltrane and kind of mm -hmm. digging into that scene and now i've been into this whole kind of new wave of emo rock like the uh, remy zero and uh, 
Night, and like the new Cardigans record, like this kind of different production, but songs for songs, almost like just normal rock music mm -hmm. with a more, I don't know, there's a good focus on, on songwriting. It's, you know, some of these bands are like the mixture of like a Queen meets Led Zeppelin meets but a, no, a modern production and a right. new vibe and it's like, it's been interesting because you know, I'm not listening to, you know, like Alan Holdsworth and like all this crazy stuff, it's right. shifted into like about songwriting and even like listening to the Beatles and just listening oh, yeah. to these simple chord progressions but I mean where the melody is in the chords and just you know thinking about songs and sections and really trying to get the most out of an idea but keep it simple you know kind of thing I'm listening to a lot of that kind of stuff yeah I don't think that I I never really listened to any kind of music of the stuff that I write and that writing for me has always been a I was not different than yeah, what you listen to. Yeah, it's really singing. strange how that happens. I mean, I listen to a lot of different things. I mean, same thing, like, Strayhead's always a something that's a staple. You right. always go back to it. You know, you want the Cult Train sound and the right. Miles Davis sound. You go back and listen to it because it fills that particular niche. And I have been listening a lot to Bill Evans, man, just because of his voice and the way he puts things together. Oh, just the this phenomenal. harmonic yeah. poet, you yeah, know, definitely. his playing. Um, but actually, I've mainly been listening to a lot of classical music. Since I've been out here in the past year or so, I've been really focusing on that. Um, but as far as rock and stuff goes, I don't listen to stuff that's really too current right now. I still enjoy a lot of the stuff that's maybe just a few years old, still, even like Foo Fighters and stuff like that. I mean, I think there's some cool stuff there. And of course, Peter Gabriel and um, really, really love David Sylvian and the stuff, his new record. And, um, there's just something that he does, the way he presents his music to me, that is. Uh, it seems so complete. Conceptual. Yeah, it's just like from beginning to end, it's very consistent. And even if you don't like the music, there's still, you can kind of really perceive this kind of whole. It's not just him throwing songs out. Right. You know, from the packaging right. to the presentation, all of that. And that's something that I wish to, to kind of emulate and to kind of um, to, to integrate the music that we're working on yeah. into something where it's not just the three of us playing on something, here are some songs that there's some bigger kind of um, conceptual value to it. Right. Otherwise, it's, to me, it's not really worth right. doing. So it's interesting, because he's more, even though he's a, it's like a solo thing, pretty much, it is a concept. It's almost like he has qualities of a band because he's presenting something right. that's so whole, you know, like, and it's, it's, not, it's a not, piece of art, like, you know, I mean, right. down to the artwork, I mean, it's a concept, it's not like, okay, here's my solo record, not yeah, that not the record label did him. my, you know, right. artwork and stuff. It's interesting. And then Bjork, of course, is always kind of... Well, that's a state. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's always state. a breath of fresh air. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it's funny, I've kind of jumped back, listened to uh, Bjork quite a bit lately. I've actually gone gone back and listened to a couple old uh, albums, uh, Chick Corea and Sight Out, the mm -hmm. one that I've, I've been enjoying a little. Uh, myself, it's odd to hear what you guys are listening to because we listen to completely. Yeah. We go in our little little phases into totally different things. I've been listening to actually a lot of Latin jazz, mm -hmm. um, Buena Vista, Social Club, That's a great CD. Cubanissimo. Um, gosh, quite a few different things, and actually a lot of pop, just radio, uh, very simple, catchy. You know, just just. Uh, Keeping an ear out on what's right. going going on and what's been coming out, yeah. but then uh, when it comes to writing, God, I've been putting out a blur of just everything from from like, groove, you know, yeah. old funk to to the stuff we've been working on, and, um, <clears throat> but quite a contrast between all of us. It's interesting. And, uh, what we've been producing actually has nothing to do with anything that we've been listening to. Right. Well, maybe for you. <laughs> well, however, <laughs> but then again, I guess we all perceive music uh, and listen to many different styles of music. But when it comes to our own aspects of uh, of writing, we don't grab onto that. Right. You know, we don't. We don't. We pull the influences, but we don't. Uh, Wear them on our sleeve. Yeah, exactly. No, and I think that's something. Well, exactly. I guess we could be guilty in certain areas. Well, the funny thing is, though, is that a lot of the music, you know, a lot of things that we like to listen to, there's a great majority of it that's not real popular. But, and, Which is a good, good thing. Well, yeah, but, but in the sense, too, that when you are wearing an influence, it's something that you know quite well it has come from a certain thing.
GK band or a solo CD. For me, when we did the first Gordy Nut record, it started off as uh, a record that was going to be like a follow-up to my solo CD, Cortland, which was more of a fusion CD, but I wanted to do something that was um, maybe less overtly jazz or jazzy or jazz-like and um, a little bit heavier, a little bit more aggressive, but still had um, technical elements to it. But I wanted it to be more melodic. I wanted to have a melodic sense to it. And when I started working on it, because Cortland, in a way, although it was great to work on, it was a tremendous amount of work because I was really just sitting and writing all the music and didn't have the benefit of, of interacting with other people. But I think that was necessary for me to go through, to have that kind of experience. But for the most part, I don't enjoy working that way. But since distance keeps all the band members apart so much, it's, it's difficult to collaborate. So I see it as... Um, it's definitely a group and a project, but it's something where um, I kind of indicate or start off with the structure of the music, and then uh, we all have the input on that. I'm not telling anyone necessarily what to play, but at times I kind of have executive veto power, right. you know, with what at, you know ultimately gets used. But to this to this date, I've never said no to anything that was you know that couldn't be used or didn't sound right, but. It's something where I don't really have a complete conception of how the whole thing's going to sound, because I don't know how it's going to sound. You know, until, and that's the exciting part about it. So it's like, um, I'm kind of like the ringleader in a way, but everyone is, is a, an equal collaborative and creative contributor, as little or as much as they want to, which is what, what I like about it. Well, I felt that way. I mean, I felt that if I, even, even in Court Lant, I had an idea or two. And it wasn't like, no, this is how it had to be. Yeah. And with the, uh, you know, the first Gordian Knot record, I certainly felt that. I mean, you even said it was like, you know, every idea is open game. You know, what I mean? right. here's just what I have going on, and it's, it seemed to always maintain that. You know, and I, so I feel like I have enough, plenty of room to to do anything that I, you know wanted to or had an idea or to certainly try it and see if it works. Because you know? people have asked me that before and I think, you know, <laughs> if I'm the one who's telling you what to play... Why do you need us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, why would I have Jason Goble or Sean Ryan playing on the record if, you know, I'm the one who's, you know, if I could come up with that stuff, I'd, I'd be my own one-man band. Yeah, we, <laughs> well, we've, we've worked uh, together a lot before and as far as this album, the way that I view it is, and the way that we've done it, is it's been very open. There's been a lot of you know contributing from all the all the, the members that are uh, working on it, but it's your it's your game, mm -hmm. and by you pretty much starting the idea or setting an idea for the song, from there with myself, I know I have free reign to create, but I've got a basis on what we're working on or you know a vibe that we're that yeah. we're looking for. And, of course, with all of us with writing, we write so many different styles of things. You pick and choose what is going to work for the project. But uh, it's been very open. It's been, you know, a lot of fun being able to contribute as much as, you know, we've been able to. Yeah. And because it is very much like a band thing. Right. You know, in, in that it, sense, which is very good, much there's, there's a democracy involved in it that, that makes it fun for everybody. Exactly. And because we have the, I guess, the experience from playing with each other so much that there's not a, there's never been a fear I don't even think about in my mind like well I hope they come up with something good that's not it's like I can't wait to hear what they come up with <laughs> yeah. you know and like and then right. go on to the next thing so. I, I think I think really what it is is I think if you didn't have the incentive to do this or to put you know the whole business side together I mean I don't think this is something I would be pursuing you know what I mean right. um, but it's so much fun to work with you guys and the opportunity is there I mean that it allows me to be creative in a way that I wouldn't, it would not have necessarily way. happened anywhere else and it's like I, I, I love working like that and I love just you know having different experiences because I mean, the funny thing for me is that like with a record like this let's say you know someone else was doing a record like this and asked me to play and I think I'd be less interested to play on a record like this than I would to be involved in the writing because I think the stuff I like to play on is so different than the stuff that I actually like to write I mean I think of bass parts absolutely usually last you know, when I'm writing this stuff, because I'm, you know, thinking of the other things. Compositionally. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's funny how if someone presented me with this material, I mean, I, I think I'd like it, but I don't I don't think I'd have the same interest as I do in trying to create this different kind of texture, this kind of music that is, um, has a kind of a nod to jazz in terms of the structure, but the, texturally it's nothing like it. 
Well, and, and um, looking at working on it, it's interesting because even though, for example, that I've contributed, uh, what I've contributed towards it, it has, it's a Malone vibe, and it really is. And I'm sure if we switched it around and if we were doing something where I was starting the vibe, it would have a different feel too. That's but what that's I mean. what's cool yeah. about it, that's yeah. what's unique. Oh, no, totally. Yet there's still the total free creativity, yeah. you know, mode there, but it still has your air, you know, so it's... It's uh, it's it's very cool because it's it's very free, yet still has a direction. Right. It's still and there is a band you know, sense still. You know, there, there's a core, there's a core to the group, and we have some soloists that come in, you know, now and again to do things. People who I like to work with. Put and, the ornaments uh, on the tree. You know, that's right. After we, after we stuck it in the little <laughs> right. altar, you know, Wait watered it. You know, exactly. <laughs> well, like you said, if if you were to come and tell me that, hey Jay, I want you to play on this, and I've written out all the music, and this is what I want you to play. It would definitely lose a bit of the of, of the thrill, yeah. and even when you look at it as as far as the guys like Jar Zombek and, and Trey that are gonna, uh, Trey's contributing a lot. A lot. Jar Zombek, I know you've got a couple other guys that are gonna uh, pitch in here. It's still free for them, right? Because it's soloing. It's it's you know, um, and I know on all of them you said you're having them coming in and doing some soloing, but they can jump in and do rhythm ideas. They can jump right. in and do anything that they hear. Right. So it's still not a project where they have to come in and have to read something or have because to play to me, something. Because to me, when you see these records where it's like, you know, guest solo, such and such, to me, there's something, there's nothing more distant than that, where you have some guy that you know is not in the room with these people, and they just played the solo, got the check, and then went on, and to me, it's trying. years and years on and off we would kind of focus on it no pun intended um, and to try and get it done then uh, you know some kind of block would come because of that and it was mainly a legal thing knowing whether or not we could do that and we finally found out through Jay's hard work and getting a copy of the contract um, <laughs> Which we that we signed a lot of that we could not legally do it and Although we all would really like to have a live document, I think, out there of that. The idea of putting a live CD out for us was something where it's already done, there's no hassle, we don't have to worry about getting tangled up and mixing and all this sort of thing. It's like just ready to Flip go, and master and just check it out, you know, here's what happened. And since it couldn't be done like that, the, the money and time it would take to pursue doing something which ultimately would, I think would have a bad end to it because you'd have to have so many contractual things with so many sure. different companies to try and get it doesn't make it worth it anymore I think for the for the fan right. to hear that stuff but I would still like to try and get some of it out to you know, the hardcore fans that have been so supportive for so long like through a web download or something like that but we've got to make it equitable right. for everybody in the group right. you know I think that's what people have misunderstood the most that's like you know, you get the email, it's like, hey, can I have a copy of it? Or, you know, can you send me some videos? And you'll understand that there's four other people right. that did this tour. And when you send something out like that, or, you know, someone sends you money for something like that, well, what about the other people? Exactly. You know, it, it's that's why I've, I've always had just that stance. It's just been no. It's, it's not because I don't want them to have it, but out of fairness for everybody, unless we decide to say we're going to sell these things and work something together, it's not worth doing something. Well, like and, and also, and, and the points you brought up were, were exactly correct. But um, we tried to have a level of integrity on on the album, and you know these videos. If we were going to do something like that, right. and if we could make it equitable, we would like to also work on it a little bit and put out a right. you know, product, product with with some good integrity. But like you said, legally, 
uh, financially, and it's 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 hard to do it with us being spread out so far away, and it's just been. Uh, a tough issue that we've we've all wanted to do, and it's it's sad. It's been so hard. Well, and and for a long time we <laughs> contractually we couldn't put it out. Yeah, I mean it was only till like what five change. months ago that we could. <laughs> so well, we technically still can't though. That's the yeah. thing. Oh, it just seriously? because there's like a five year extension at five past the seven. end of the contract that so. says anything that was recorded during the term of the contract cannot be put out. So there you go. Yeah. And I think, at least for myself, I could say that the further we get away from that time, I find myself being just a bit more nostalgic about that as a time, more than a relevant musical. You know, I, I still go through my phases and maybe listen to the record and think about those times, you know, fondly, of course, but at the same time, I kind of like, that's then, well, yeah, you know, let's no, just kind of leave it intact. And yeah, and, and one of the reasons I think that we've considered it, because it is something that, that actually has is, is in the past for us, right. in a big sense, um, but just for the support and the people that have actually wanted it, and the fact that we have it, and, and we want to be able to let people see that and view it, right. um, has been one of the main reasons that I think I myself have wanted to be able to do this, was for the people that really were there for us. composer and as a player, <coughs> taking these things we've talked about um, uh, with influences and different things that if you can borrow from the things that you like to listen to in the sense that, for instance, jazz, you, know, you have a structure where there's melodic elements and then improvisation over, over a structure, but to me I'm not trying to um, set something that is so rigid that we have this kind of boxed form with it, that within there we can feel free to improvise in a sense. Like when we did the first record, we were joking before about how we hadn't played any of the songs through yet before we recorded them. <laughs> and of course, time is a big, and money is a big part of that. But there's also a part of it too, I think it keeps it exciting for us to do it, is that we don't really know. So when we're doing that take of code, anti-code or something, and then that's the end result, it's like, right. yeah, that's it now. You know, it wasn't like, did we get it? Right. Or did you play the part where it's like, I like how that sounds. Right. Exactly. And then we build on top of that. And to me, that's the best part about writing this way and it's what beauty of it. Or having the opportunity to play on a record where someone's not telling you what to play. Right. Or, you know, it is so boxed. Um, and I think that is the beauty of Cynic and the things that have come from that. Yeah. You know, because. And it's something I didn't realize we had until it didn't have it, you know, right. which was a record deal of allowing us to put out basically anything we wanted to put out, you know, which is pretty crazy, yeah. you know. I mean, a lot of people have that opportunity, you know. And I guess for us, a lot of it wasn't money based anyway. But it, it, it's this this kind of project allows you to do the same thing, but. You know, a lot of time has gone past since the last time, you know, right. so where you are playing wise, it allows you to incorporate that and interpret that in an environment where you don't necessarily know what it's going to end up. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, if you, if you like do have it all set in your head, like, you know what it's going to sound like exactly. Why do you need the players? It's I like, like this, the snapshot quality of it. It's really capturing a moment, you know, as, as a performer and as a composer. Sure. And, and that's what time. it is. It's a performance. Yeah. And it's a, you know. That, that's definitely a, a it's, it, it, it is art in that sense, you know, I think that that's 
something that like pop music uh, or, or a lot of radio music doesn't have, and it was capturing that performance and it not being perfect and it not being. You know, well, it's going to be unique. It's going to be completely unique, no matter how much we've worked on this material and we have the ideas of what we're going to play. We haven't uh, put everything, you know, down in ink or anything right. like that where we're playing a specific right. thing. And uh, until we do that final track, and then until someone and else puts the, the final track yeah. on top, yeah. and the final track, and then the mix, mm -hmm. exactly. we have no idea what it's going to sound like. We have a concept, right? But that's the coolest thing. So it's like uh, it's like a seed in a way. I mean, it just it's going to grow somehow. We just don't and, know how. And we know we're going to like it, but uh, right. we don't know what we're going to like about it. But I'd, I'd also like to try to achieve a record that I like to listen to or something yeah, I can put on that. seriously and just yeah. you know I mean like where I am at playing now it's so not about how many notes you can fit in that right. space or the cool fill you can do there look I can do this seven over four thing <laughs> here and it's like pocket lay it down yeah. have a solid foundation have a solid sense of song and structure right. and let all the elements weave themselves in and out. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what I'm striving for most in something well, like one this. Of the, you know? One of the issues with that is that in most of our uh, uh, experience in music, you, you are, you're playing a specific thing. So before it's recorded, you already know what it's going to sound right. like, and you've already played it how many times right. to get ready for the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beauty about this is, is we're going to hear something new after the studio, you know, right. or after the recording. That's a good way to put it, um, yeah. So it's it's going to be fresh, and we're going to be able to listen to it because I know after a lot of the projects and, and recording that that I've done, by the time you're done recording, you're like, man, I need a break. <laughs> you know, I'll listen to it in a month. Yeah, or, and I and know. I find myself too, like even just doing takes. Although I have an idea of what my parts are going to be, each take is different, you know, and it, and it gets molded as I listen back. But I just try to keep something that was done, and I'm not going to say one take because of course we do punching in stuff like that. But at least with the sections that it felt like that captured that moment I like how it sounds right. and then eventually that becomes the part for me well, and you I hear it and once you that, hear it yeah. too many times you can't get exactly. it out of your head right. and that's the fine line between yeah okay maybe it might not be perfect but it has a character right it's got a, a vibe to it and so that's why to me it's it's the gut reaction to a take sure. versus the, the, the compositional aspect at that point because you know did I like it Sean you were supposed to play a B there right. okay <laughs> and if it didn't work out then but if it sounds good then, then that's cool. what counts exactly yeah. I Portal Eon Spoke. Um, Portal and Eon Spoke were both names we were tossing around for the extension of Cynic on Roadrunner. We were trying to put out a record of um, of catchy songs, songs that could could uh, be played and listened to in a totally different situation. Songs could be played on the radio. Um, and the misconception was we never really settled on a name, <laughs> so we kind of had both names at the same time. Um, and that was with uh, Chris Kringle on bass, and, and Jason on guitar, and Paul on guitar, and Arun on keys and vocals, and me on drums. And. Um, it, it never got off the ground. I mean, we got dropped from Roadrunner, which is what we tried to do because mm -hmm. we thought we could get a major record label <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and um, and it just ev eventually evaporated. I mean, we had ten songs, but I think if we had someone with the right vision to kind of conjugate us in a certain area instead of being so spread out, right. which um, you know was was definitely the downfall of the band and the naive notion that we could just get a record deal yeah. well, from, no, like, let me let me throw a little a few things in there because as far as in the the getting a record deal I think that we have had our we had our issues with the record company that we were working with oh, and had the contract right. with and we weren't happy with the contract and we were actually in pursuit of getting out of the contract um, one of the reasons were was we just weren't happy and, and regardless if we had a, a major deal or, or even another minor deal or whatever um, we weren't happy and we were trying to get out. The fact that we didn't um, get a deal, there was other factors involved as far as uh, you know things that were going on in our lives. We had been together for many years as far as the, the core group and uh, we, we wanted to venture into different ideas. Um, Focus was a, was a pretty heavy album. 
we had gone through a real heavy phase in our past, and I think we all wanted to venture into new ideas and different ventures also. That's so there's a, a lot of other variables that uh, that fall into pretty much the, the, the demise of the band, um, and uh, more so than just you know a major deal or not. Well, and I tell you, there's something to be said for having not necessarily a dominant role player in a band, but certainly someone with much more of a vision of what a project should be instead of having five people who were so stubborn and their own vision of what it is right. that it's like there's no way there's like no to have something that's congruent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, we were all, uh, you know, in some bands you have major contributors and you have minor contributors. We were all contributors, 100%. Mm -hmm. Everyone had an equal part, everyone had an equal vote, which was, was very... And everyone wanted to kick everyone's ass. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we, had our, we definitely had our moments. It wasn't an easy ride, but uh, it was fair. Right. You know, it was fair, and uh, that was the only way we could work, because everyone was so right. into it, and so... But that's not a way to put out... You know, material yeah. democratically. Yeah, well okay, well, you know, even though it doesn't sound good, I guess you know, since you had that much pull, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's where a lot of the problems came up. Yeah. And so that's kind of the misconception. But now Eon Spoke does exist. Yeah, why, why, don't you, why don't you why don't you go into that a little more, Sean? Because there now there's really two different. Yeah. Uh, well, Paul Eon and I have been writing songs together for about four months now, and and we're pursuing a more. Um, um, Emo, emo rock kind of kind of vibe. It's just me and Paul right now, but we've been recording a lot of songs, and eventually we're going to put together players to pursue a live thing and, and pursue a record deal and see what happens. So, so and this project is, is <coughs> called Eon Scope. Called Eon Scope. So the ten songs are really a different Ten songs, entity. in my mind, are Portal. Right, that's how I see it. Which is the name I wanted. So, <laughs> to clarify so it, that's what it it'll be, Portal will be the old stuff. Right, Eon, Eon Scope, Scope will be, be the new. We finally got the name. There first. you go. Can you hear so to clear first? all the confusion or to give you more confusion, <laughs> there you have it. Sean, you moved to LA, and um, which is a big move. You know, it's coast to coast, east coast, west coast kind of thing, and you've been experimenting a lot with. Um, you know, electronic stuff. What are some of the things you've been doing? And why'd you have um, there to begin with? Well, basically, uh, I was going to school at the University of Miami and studying composition. And um, I started, you know, talking to Paul a lot, and he was saying how big the underscore scene there is the film score. And mm -hmm. he had kind of started working for the guy who writes the music for Third Rock from the Sun. And, you know, it was a lot of opportunities. And I was sitting in school, and school always, for me, it's always been about the knowledge and not the piece of paper. And I was enjoying going to school, but I was kind of getting by without putting much effort in and I kind of got disinterested in the mm. fact that I was spending so much money to do things that were not necessarily hard or really right. you know contributing yeah it, I mean that cross with uh, you know yeah and uh, so he, he had this connection that uh, they were looking for composers for Discovery Channel doing a, a kids show and it, we made I flew out to LA um, to stay there for a couple weeks to write with Paul in his little workstation, and we put together a a uh, like a five Q demo CD, and we're kind of you know interested to see what would happen. And we got a call to, to write the music for a show for Discovery Channel. So I was weighing in my mind, hmm, go to school or try the real world and yeah. see what's going on. I mean, certainly I've always wanted to still pursue the band thing and songwriting and performing mm -hmm. was always, it's like it's part of me, it'll always be there, you know. But there's a time for that, you know. Absolutely. A lot of people don't understand that too, especially some of the, the younger people who are listening because um, when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, it's, it's so much easier to, you know, to go to school, work your part-time job, and then rehearse with your band the right. rest of the time. And then, then there's decisions that you have to make. You Gotta know? eat. It's called rent. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some people do, do a path where they learn, uh, learn jazz really well, and they're getting all their jazz gigs and stuff. But for me, it was always a matter of trying to do something that was original, whether I was writing it or not. Right. I wanted to do something that was... You know, a lot of people will measure you by, you know, how many standards you have memorized and then, you know, can play in different keys right. and things like that. And like to me, that was really important in the beginning, but then I kind of realized, 
that's just really getting you prepared for this little pond. You know, you're gonna try and be the biggest fish that you, pond, that you can. Yeah. And just that whole mentality to me was really destructive. I thought negative, and um, so I didn't have a conception about what this or what I wanted to play. As long as it was something new and kind of exciting, I think that's why I pursued and still do like doing a lot of session work for different albums. Um, because, like you said, it's a, as much experience as you can. I can't sure. say I really loved all of it, <clears throat> but I really learned a lot. Oh, you can all even the worst session in the world. You take away a lesson without right. a doubt. I mean, even if it's what not to do. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Of course. But yeah. I really enjoy. You know, a lot of times I'll just get tapes and stuff sent here, and I'll work on a, on somebody's record and. Uh, that kind of solitude of being able to do that on your own and work sure. on it and then get the feedback and then you know craft and everything it's it's part of the greatest part of being a musician oh, and just putting yourself that. in an environment that you know man you didn't see coming and all of a sudden it's like right. oh cool man I played on a Latin record yeah. oh cool man I did a string session and wrote for strings you know right. or I did underscore for a TV show you know that's cool stuff and I actually you know. received a check for it yeah, yeah. the check is Which a is, good is thing a, I like the it's check it's a hard concept to you know, the to check reach or a hard level to reach. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. At a certain point, you do have to make key decisions. Like because you, said. you you get to be kind of the, the kind of player who you know if you're a New York session guy and you're getting paid because you're a great reader, not because it's the personality of your playing. You know, that's the decision. It's like, did I want to like path. right? You know, or just like, did I want? You know, I'd rather try to be the kind of person who ask me to play because they like the way that I the play flavor, specifically. Right. You know, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, that's. To me, the more interesting, it, it just keeps it more interesting for me to want to keep pursuing session work and things like that. But there's like some electronic stuff that you were doing too. Yeah, well, so I ventured in and, 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 and you know, have been, had been doing sequencing stuff and doing a lot of stuff on my own, even in Miami, you know, for school and, and writing and never had a legitimate avenue for it, you know, or even a, a vision of what it should be. And uh, I started listening to a lot of electronic music and just, you know, having... The, the technical having the gear to be able to do some of this stuff now I mean the technology is there now that where anybody can you know pretty much you know have you listened to like the, like the really like I mean old school electronic music like the first experiment craft like, work well I'm not like talking that. like not even a pop sense but uh, like Sabotnik and, and Stockhouse and like so old like with the tapes and just the just tape noise machines, and John Cage yeah. and stuff. I mean, music concrete it, stuff, it's, it's you know? funny how um you know, a lot of those things still sound so new to our oh, yeah, ears. Oh, yeah. You can imagine back then. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> when they were first doing definitely, that stuff. So. Definitely. Um, I guess the, the great thing about that electronic side, which is something I don't know very much about or I haven't done that much about, but when I hear stuff, I really like it. Right. Because it's just, we take this notion of music and we expand it. Totally. You know, music, people for centuries have been trying to come up with a definition for that, but for me, it's 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 organized sound. Right. That's all it is. Whether or not it's noise or not, yeah. in terms of frequency, how you to me, it. I think it's a matter of, is this what's the intent behind the way it's organized? Right. There are people who will put things together just to shock you, and to me that's very transparent and not worth very much, because it's not making me think, it's not making me do anything. But they're like trying to make me see how long I can sit and right. take it, you know, and it just you just get up and walk out because th that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. But um, you know, you take all those kind of extreme John Cage, you take Bjork, who creates these kind of percussion sounds out of these noises, mm -hmm. but they're supplying a certain function in sure. the rhythm section, you know, and that kind of forward thinking is in terms of electronic music, sure. is, and it's a kind of treatment. Well, there's there's a certain there's a certain kind of. Uh, 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 contrast you can have though because you can have these electronic sounds that are so synthetic and then you mix them with normal sounds and it's like you almost have this Different primitive things. and modern right. thing going on and it's I mean it, it, it just it works I was intrigued by the sounds and part of the freedom that you don't know what sounds you're gonna get and there really are no rules and it's kind of up to you and right. the fact that you can scrape a spoon across your desk record that put it in and it dictates a whole composition yeah. This was so interesting to me, and I mean, I I had started listening to you know becoming more aware of you know the underscoring commercials and TV and, and so all you're that stuff. You, you and play spoons. So I play spoons now. <laughs> no, but it's interesting, you know, because you you become more concerned with sounds more than that's Protection. a piano sound or that's a, this instrument. It's like man, you can. <laughs> can do some crazy stuff. Well, so much I think the mentality with composition in general is that you have these instruments sure. and I'm going to write music for this sure. instrument that will exploit sure. this instrument and that's, to me that's, um, 
there's no such thing as right or wrong right. with that, but it's, it's a way of thinking that no matter how fast or hard you run, you're only going to come in this, to a dead end, to the circle, you can only take it so far. But instead, well, I have a piano, and these are the sounds I can get out of right. it, and now I'm going to try and do this exactly. with it. Right. You know? And I think that's that, that little phase shift, that little change in perception is what allows people like the ones we've mentioned to create something that is still accessible, sure. but really looks to the future. Oh, absolutely. Which is, uh, absolutely. we spoke about earlier about the beauty of Bjork, I feel, mm -hmm. is that she, uh, you know, she dives into a lot of this electronic <coughs> sounds and uh, yet she's using sounds that, that you don't normally, you know, hear also combines them with, you know, the normal, you know, realm strings, of strings and, and, and a song, strong sense and of song too, you know. It's still accessible, it's still pop, it's still catchy. And it sells, creates its own kind of world it's there. Completely it's, unique. It's not like someone taking a string quartet and putting a beat behind it. Yeah. You exactly. know, it's saying it's like, well, I need, okay, cool. right. <laughs> it's like, I need strings here to achieve this texture. And that's what she does. And that's and the key of, of not only having the sounds, having the resources, knowing how to do them, but right. the key is where you put that, for example, noise. Right, and, is, and are you exploiting that or using it to, to create, create towards the whole exactly. organic kind of sound? And I think that's a good way to kind of wrap up how I'm thinking about the kind of music that we're doing, is that I want to hear you know, those elements from you, those kinds of things that I don't have exposure to, right. and that's going to breathe a kind of life in sure. it that I never conceived of. Sure. And the same thing with the guitar approaches and things that you're doing. You know, when I when I get tracks back from you here, and I think the, the best reaction I have is when I say, "I would have never Donna. thought of that." Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> you know, right. even if it's just a simple little part, like I would have never thought of those three notes. Right. You know, no matter right. how right. many desert islands you want to, you know, put me on, I totally. would have never thought of those three notes, and that's what makes it. That's what makes it work. Totally, as right. you're bringing something to the table at that point, you know, right. you are putting your flavor on there, which is cool because uh, even though. We all have very similar interests and in, in, in backgrounds in listening music. We all have very different interests, backgrounds in listening music. So, uh, for example, like something that, that I came up where you come up with, and, and I've done it myself many times, I would have never thought of that. Yeah. Well, it's because it's not coming from me. It's coming from a completely different perspective. Right. Yet, it all vibes, and which is a really cool concept. If I can draw on the metaphor of the title of the, of the ensemble of Gordian Knot, this idea that things are tied together, um, then I'm more interested in kind of like the fabric, the underneath. You know, we have like these these areas of music and art and sciences where we have these kind of anomalies and things that 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 surface that you know kind of command us to look at in a way to try and figure out these kind of puzzles and riddles. But ultimately, it's all tied to a deeper fabric, and I think that's the kind of thing that we're getting in touch with when we're writing together. Because if we were so disparate, how could we really come up with something that was meaningful? So it's the fact that there's a strong you know, uh, kind of not kind of connection, a chord that binds, the, I think, the three of us with what we do, but there's so much else on the periphery that that's what, it's still, it's still going to sound okay to us, because no matter what we put on top of it, you can still hear the, that core, the three of us, and I, that to me that's the best part about it, and that's my conception, you know, of a kind of um, an ensemble that changes personnel from time to time, but at the core of it is the, the same thing.